Just real quick, this video here is in response to a question that someone here on YouTube, a quat insect, asked me. He wanted to see a video of praying mantises breeding, an in-depth video. And what you're about to watch is an in-depth video about breeding praying mantises. I also take the opportunity to showcase the close-ups, the feeding of uh, mantises. Um, one of the tricks when you're breeding mantises is to offer a feeder, a roach or a cricket or some other kind of prey insect to the female mantis before you put the male in the cage. And really that's the first step in the captive breeding process. It's always a very delicate time. It's always a confined space that you are putting your mantises in. Um, you could do it out on a plant or something like that, I suppose, but um, typically I end up going to bed because I usually start this up rather late at night for some reason. It's just how my schedule works. Maybe the slowest time of day for me, I guess, but um, I put them together and you really have to watch them the whole time. If, unless you have tons of males and females, adults to work with, um, in this case, I only have one, maybe two males, not really sure, and I think I have four females. And you're always taking a chance when you introduce a male to the cage. Got an email there. So you have to keep an eye on things because it's not uncommon for the female to just go for the male rather immediately in the captive situation where they're in a cage rather than in the wild. Um, there isn't a lot of data probably on how frequently males are eaten by females in the wild setting because uh, people aren't out there just making observations about that, watching how many males are eaten by the females. And so we only have the information about what happens in captivity. So um, it is a myth that you will see perpetuated across many YouTube channels that the female always eats the male or that the female eats the head off the male while he's breeding with her. These things do happen, and as I mentioned in the video, they are more likely to happen in captivity, but um, it can be prevented if you are excessively careful. And as keepers and as breeders, who want to not just provide the best lives for their pets, um, but also to ensure a next generation. It is our responsibility to intercede, to intervene when things are going in the wrong direction. And so I always, and largely as is probably the case with most keepers, because I have so few specimens to work with, I always keep a very careful eye on what's happening in the cage when I introduce the male. And you will see in this video that it's often an evolving situation. You don't know what's happening in that moment necessarily. You're making observations to the best of your human ability to try to understand what's happening between the female and the male and watching very carefully to see what their response to each other is, because it only takes a split second, a fraction of a second, for the female to grab the male and decide that he is food, not the eventual father of her offspring. And so I will typically feed the female a cricket or a roach, and while she is feeding on that, I will then introduce the male into the cage that she is already in. You'll see different ways of doing this online, but that's my method. That's always the method that I employ. I will typically have had the female in that cage for a few days already, a larger cage than what she typically resides in while I'm growing her up to maturity. And so the trick then is to place the male in the right position from the very beginning. Um, there are a couple different ways you can do it. You can just put them together, walk away. I don't recommend that for the reasons I've already stated. 
I always tried to orient the male into the right space, often placing him directly on her back by way of a pair of tongs that he has crawled out, like a pair of tongs, like my fingers here. He has crawled out to the very edge of them, and then the female might be right here, and I will move the tongs closer and closer, and I will watch him, and I will see if he shows some interest in the female as he gets closer and closer, and I will just hold those tongs with him at the tip of them to see if he will crawl onto her back or if he will instead try to fly away. Now, the female is always occupied by feeding. I never introduce a male into a cage unless the female is actively feeding on something because we can never really tell as keepers whether the female is hungry or not. And so if she is actively feeding on prey at the time of introduction of the male, we know for a fact that um, she is not going to perceive him as food. Now, she may still, at some point, as mentioned in this video, drop her prey that she is actively feeding on and um, in response to the male because she either perceives him as a threat or, um, you know, she's not ready to mate yet and he is bothering her in some way that only mantises perhaps understand. Um, and so we are just constantly tweaking, watching, making changes on the basis of the developing situation, and you have to make snap decisions sometimes. And what I really appreciated about the filming of this video, just in terms of presenting it to you and the way events unfolded, is that it didn't go perfectly from the very beginning. And you are able to watch how I sort of manipulated the situation. Yes, we are sort of playing God in this situation as we um, sort of manipulate the mantis, the female and the male. You know, we, we start by feeding the female from the very beginning. And then we position the male so that he doesn't have to do all the work to get close to the female. He doesn't have to take those risks and so, yes, we are manipulating the situation to our advantage and to the advantage of both the male and the female. We can't afford as keepers with uh, limited numbers of these mantises to take risks. And so the game for us is to minimize those risks and to increase the chances that they're going to pair or breed successfully. You will also see in this video some close-up macro shots of uh, the female feeding. Decided to throw that in there for you. And um, I think this video really does a good job to demonstrate everything from beginning to end. And so with that, please enjoy the video. If you have questions about what is happening and why I did what I did, or um, maybe you have experienced breeding mantises before and things didn't go this way, or you maybe have a better way of doing it, or some suggestions to share with the audience here, I welcome all your comments and questions. Thank you very much for watching and please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Good-sized female, Iridula. Giant Asian mantis, Iridula. Membranesia. And I've just put this roach in here. Let's uh, back this camera up here a little bit. Let's see if I can hold it through here, the screen. There we go. Oh, there she goes. And that'll be a nice meal for her. And hopefully keep her busy as we introduce the male. Who will hopefully be the father of her offspring. Her abdomen's still a bit on the thin side there. You can see the margins there at the sides. 
still a lot of room inside of that abdomen for it to round out. She looks pretty round from this angle, but really, if you look at this, see those two sides right there, that side, little triangular section of the abdomen, and then the matching one on the opposite side there. Her abdomen could be as big around as my finger and the general shape of it too. And that would be ideal before introducing a male, but we're not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna introduce him now. And partly because he's getting a little bit older and I'm worried that he may not be around much longer. And so he's also, I put him in with a female one other time and she, uh, he didn't really show much of an interest in mating. And so we'll get him going in there. It's kind of hard to maneuver this with one hand on the camera. I'm gonna back the camera up here a little bit. Well, there he begins to get a little closer to her. And often their antennae will vibrate quite a bit. Once they notice the female, it's funny because I'm not sure that he has actually noticed the female, not in a visual way. He may sense her presence in some way, and the vibrating of his antennae may be an indicator of that. Now, when they're really interested in the females, they will look directly at them, and often very suddenly. I think he's still sort of calming down, getting used to the fact maybe that He's suddenly in a new enclosure here. There he is. Tempted to say he's primping, but that would suggest that he's trying to make himself more appealing to the female when likely he's simply cleaning his antenna. Try to make some changes over here for a second. Accidentally bumped him there, that's not good. So he's immediately going away from her and I'm going to grab him again here. Well, maybe I'm not going to grab him. I'm going to gently move him towards the female so that he is oriented or behind her like that. And though it looks like he's turning to walk away, Well, I guess we won't be able to see here. I'm going to make some changes here. I'm just going to keep you guys with me here because this is just how it goes sometimes. I'm going to pull him here with my hand. Okay, well, now this is, this is interesting. She has just looked at him. And sometimes at this point, the female will drop the food, which in this case is that doobie roach that can be quite torn up. And uh, I'll show you what things look like right now from his perspective. She has her gaze, her stare firmly upon him, and it's really not a good place for him to be question is, is she going to drop the food and then go for what would be a larger meal in him? So, just going to watch here for a moment, but I think he sort of didn't realize because I was disturbing him that there was a female there and so I'm going to move him away from this situation here. Back you up, back you up. There we go. Now, 
this is interesting because what he just did there is sort of a half mount that she is not immediately dropping the roach and grabbing him is a good sign, but this is still a very precarious position for him to be in because she may change her mind here very shortly or make it up one way or the other. He still has a chance if she will return to feeding. He still has a chance to maneuver himself into a safer position, which would be to be his body lined up on her back, behind her, so that she couldn't turn around and reach him. So we'll just wait here for a moment, and uh, I'll try not to bump the cage too much here. Keep a close eye on this. Now, one of my tricks in a situation like this sometimes, if the roach isn't moving enough on its own, which is, this one is moving somewhat, I will sometimes give the roach a little bit of a tug. And sometimes when the female redirects her attention to her prey again, the male makes his final move. Now, this probably isn't the best time for him to be drawing attention to himself and grooming himself, but it looks like he's about to start that up again. And there he goes. And so he doesn't seem either to realize how precarious a position he's in, or maybe he just doesn't care. I'm not sure. Or maybe he knows something that we don't know, that this female is receptive to him. He was reluctant to mount and breed with the last female I put him with. I'm going to pull the camera out here for just a second. Create a little space there. See what happens. Sometimes the light being near them when I have the camera on or the movement of me being close will distract them. So here's another trick that I sometimes do when I've been sitting here for a while and things are sort of in this gray area when it comes to progress or risk. I will gently blow on the specimens. And sometimes that emboldens the male because like a breeze moving through the trees, he feels like there's something else happening, something that draws her attention away from just him. And then in addition to that, I will sometimes just gently move the cage just a little bit. Now that was interesting because he turned around completely, which makes me think that he thought he saw something as the cage was moving. So I'm going to move it a little bit more, try to reset this situation. And you can see that he moved a single leg. I'm noticing now that his back left leg, that one that's not touching anything, it's partially damaged and possibly on account of him being a little bit older now. I'm going to blow on him again. Now this isn't a great position because she's not eating and he's not looking at her. It's bad in two ways now. So Really, maybe the best thing to do at this point would be to pull them out, 
Now it seems like I'm forcing this situation, and to an extent I am. We're always sort of playing with our own time and investing it in these situations, and often things will happen rather immediately when both the male and the female are going to show an interest in each other. Usually by this point, I will have given up on the situation. Let's see here. Back this off a little bit. So I'm going to move him a little here. And this is a pretty dangerous time. Sometimes a female will strike when she sees more than just him in the cage. So because he still has a pretty good position, and because sometimes it's just an evolving situation, I change my mind about things kind of as I go. And so what I'm going to do is try that trick I mentioned to you a moment ago. And carefully, as inconspicuously as possible, grabbing the roach's leg and not hers, I'm going to give her food just a little bit of a tug here. And this will often divert her attention back to her prey. And uh, you can see that that has worked. She has resumed feeding. And sometimes that will give the male confidence. And as she feeds, he will take the opportunity to position himself on her back in the proper way both for mating and for saving himself because he's really kind of off to the side there. Now I see one of his back legs repositioning itself there and that's good. And the front legs, oh the antennae, you can see his antennae are moving now. That's the kind of sign that we're looking for. That's when he begins to show interest, when they start moving forward and tapping away. So this is a very good sign. Now, I have seen a few times in the past the male decide that he's going to go after her food and try to take it from her. But he instead is positioning himself on her back, I think. It's a very good sign when they put their legs around her. You can call it the waist if you want to, but that's her thorax, the pronotum. And it's when they're in that position that they are safer. And if I move this back here a little bit, you can see that it would be more difficult now for her to reach around at this angle with him right behind her like that. And so now, he's moving himself into better and better positions. And it won't be long now, and there it's already beginning to happen. His abdomen is starting to wiggle around a little bit, and it's going to, he's going to try to fold it around so that the tip of his abdomen lines up with hers. And he will need to move up on her body a little bit, probably. To make it happen, but this is all going and progressing in the perfect way now at this point. See him moving forward on her body a little bit more now. So, almost nine times out of ten, once we get to this point, there he goes. It ends in a successful pairing. Fortunately, I've got the wrong angle on this now, but I don't want to... Oh, well, one last struggle from the female there, but I think, I think this is happening now. Let's take one more look over here. If I can get the angle on it. See better? You'll see that the male 
has put the tip of his abdomen right up to hers. And shortly, will be inside of hers. You can see that she has stopped feeding, but she is letting this progress. And this is very good. We'll get her fed up really well. And it won't be long before she produces a fertile egg case. Let's see if we can get you close-ups on this. It's tough being inside the cage here with them bump things around too much. And that pretty much seals the deal right there. She's still preoccupied with her prey. And the male is fertilizing her. Sorry for the camera shake there. My hand is really extended in this kind of strange position here. I'm trying to get these pretty special shots for you. And each time I move the camera a little bit, it kind of bumps, bumps the cage. It's a myth that the females always cannibalize the males. In fact, it happens very rarely. In cages and captivity, it does happen more often. But that's because it's a confined space. And the females don't always have the same access to food that they do in nature. Under ideal circumstances, of course, they have more access to food. But a lot of new keepers don't know what to watch for and when to introduce the male. And fortunately for us, it seems to work to have worked out perfectly this time. And so, generally, this process now can go on for anywhere from an hour to all night long. I think it's about midnight now here on January 4th. Very happy with how this video went because we started off with some failures, made some changes along the way. We were able to make things happen when they weren't going to happen so quickly on their own. And there's a possibility in the morning that the male won't be here anymore. Often I'll get up in the morning and the male will be gone. Not so much because, um, you know, he couldn't get away from her, but female, if I were to come back in two hours, she might be eating his head and <laughs> the rest of his body would still be breeding with her. But this female, definitely needs another meal um, and even if she ate him entirely she would 
still probably need quite a few more meals before she produced an egg case. It sort of depends on how old she is, and I think I have a note here somewhere as to when she matured. Um, double check. Oh, there it is. All right, so my notes say that both of these mantises matured on November 19th, and so that was about a month and a half ago. A little over a month and a half ago now. And so this male wasn't quite as old as I thought he was. And it's pretty awesome that they both both matured on the same day, actually. Take some footage from a different angle here. So you can see how much the male has his body twisted up and around this side of her to get it just where it needs to go. do this without losing focus. It's not particularly easy. The mantis mouth, the female, all the palps, all sensory appendages that aid in feeding. Mantis foot, the two hook like tarsi on the end. You can see all those fine hairs there. Called CT. And then that there, those are called cerci. Two little appendages, the tip of the abdomen. I was hoping that we might see the female here. Move in for another bite. You can get a good look at the mandibles. The sclerotized, darker mouth parts. There she is tapping her prey with the palps, orienting herself, and then she'll move in on those darker sclerotized mouth parts, the mandibles. They do the chewing, the tearing. Freehanding this with one hand. And I am about a centimeter away from the mouth of this mantis, the camera here. Trying not to bump everything. Sort of waiting for that one shot where you get to really see the mandibles. She's got a real juicy bit there right now, though. See the pseudo pupil there? Not a real pupil like what we have in our eyes. More like a drink for her at this point. 
she had already chewed off the exoskeleton from this part of the body of the dubia roach. Well, let's take another look at what's happening back here. And we'll leave these two. To finish feeding and breeding. Well, here we are the next day. I went to bed and left them alone. And that's the male. Female. She didn't eat him. And so now I need to feed her up, and she will soon deposit in the case. Nice close-up of the male there. You can see those three shiny points there between his eyes at the base of his antennae. Those are his ocelli, or simple eyes. Detect light and probably aids in flight, I would imagine. Well, buddy, it's good to see you. Have three more females to introduce you to. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit the little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media Thank you for watching.